Hello everybody, welcome to the planes uh, of the Season 2 Finals and what an exciting match we have for you. <laughs> it is Strider 84 versus Seabros. I mean, they are two great coaches and they've picked teams, so they're NAF teams. I mean, this is bound to be a good game, isn't it? Hello, Skrull Dude, in the booth with me to watch this very exciting game of Blood Bowl. Howdy, scaly boys rise up. Oh. I, I don't see any scaly boys. I don't know what you're talking about. We, but we've got Blood Bowl between two coaches uh, with two teams. Um, so that's going to be really good, isn't it? You know, what we'd really like to see is, is teams playing Blood Bowl. <laughs> but yes, well, it's, it's a lizard mirror. There so. are teams. So yeah, strap in for a lizard mirror. Um, Strider is red. And has a sneaky git. No, against no. Against the team that has a. Seabros is red. Has a sneaky git. Got it. And the other team has a chameleon skink. It looks like. On the bench. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the... they are they are slightly different, in ways that I'm sure will totally matter. You know, one team has block. The other team has <laughs> the skill that everyone thinks is overpowered now. Um. So it got nerfed. Yeah. Yeah, they are slightly different. Um. The sneaky git gives Seabros high roll potential. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and far as teams, yeah, so Seabros hasn't gone for... He just, he's just got 10k spare. He's got an assistant coach, probably. Um, also, Seabros, look, this is the most exciting part of the game. Seabros has uh, Creek as his uh, coach, so there you go. That's nice, isn't it? And yeah, he's got an assistant coach. Whereas Strider has got this chameleon, and honestly, I think the chameleon is okay actually, right? Because um, if you're trying a two turn, which you might have to try, or a one turn, that you might have to try, it is actually faster than the skink on a, on a one turn or a two turn in terms of like the guy who gets the ball right with on the ball. Yep. And it's obviously got decent passing, three plus passing, so it's actually it's actually okay for a two turn or a one turn try. Um, and obviously he's the 12th man, that means you don't have to play it on defence in the first half. Or maybe at all in the game if you're lucky, so... Yeah, I, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, For a uh, team that can... That certain people on this channel have said uh, can just lose games by failing to pick up, giving your chance, yourself a chance at a free uh, catch roll, potentially, with on the ball on two turns or one turn seems pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, is a Lizmere in a blizz, yeah. That's even worse. Nightmare. And now, uh, there's no block for Seabros to do the blitz with. So he's going to have to move this guy over in case it's a double... It's both down, but he doesn't bother. But um, probably should have done right in case the... Uh, in case the Crocs failed to hit there. Should have guarded against the Crocs failing to hit. Now maybe he just brings in the assist and uh, does a three assist foul on, on a Saurus. That looks like what he's doing. You probably have to be fouling every turn. If you're going to bring the sneaky git, you got to try and leverage it, especially against Saurus, because this is are the ways you win. I don't know if it's necessary, but um, if you're going to bring sneaky git, this is why you brought it, right? Yeah. I mean, is it necessary that I drink my own urine every morning? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I do it anyway, because it's sterile. And I like the taste. Sneaky Git, not a sterile skill anymore, <laughs> not one of the uh, worst skills in the game. Possibly the worst. Now it's actually fine, and therefore it's broken, apparently, what I keep hearing. It's well, they did nerf the it. They didn't, make it. they didn't make it less good, where you can't move after fouling. But, um... yeah. it, well, it was broken when you could move afterwards, right? It was absolutely ridiculously overpowered then. Yes, letting you hide your, your extreme killer uh, at will is probably... A touch too good. It's probably unnecessary, but I guess it's good that we learned that was too good. Um, <laughs> unlike passing, where being able to move after you pass is completely irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. Funny how that works, isn't it? <laughs> Kicking yeah. somebody's head in and and being able to avoid retribution, really good. Just randomly being able to move after you've already thrown the shortest possible pass. 
so therefore it doesn't matter at all apart from like one in a million chances yeah oh wow look at that the 3d peers off there from strider nicely done and again the nerf to sneaky git right if that wasn't nerfed he would have gone one two fouled and then run all the way back mm -hmm. and have been immune to reprisals but, uh, as it is he just gets lucky <laughs> But, I mean, that's the classic strat, isn't it? That's the, uh, the the strat to beat all strats in Blood Bowl, really, is just be lucky. Uh, it's definitely plan A, is to roll better dice. Mm. Is he going to foul the sneaky git? He might do. No, because he's, he's, he's already blitzed. And he can't hit the, can't hit the crocs. This guy's already activated. I don't think uh, for this yeah, I'm just to talk about the two teams. Uh, this is not how you would have built losers in either case, because you like having guard on the Croxicore, right? Or you prefer there's a six block source build? No, I'd, I'd go six block, yeah. I'd go six block always. It, just because, just like, it's good. <laughs> yeah. six Like, six block is just brilliant. Because then you don't have, like, one doofy one that gets caught out. And especially like, yeah. with the prominence of Underworld. You really, really do want to smash every, you know, snotling and goblin that you see. So. Yeah, you don't want them just to mark it with a snotling. It's like, it's a three dice versus a strength four player versus a three dice versus a strength four player with block. So we're just going to mark up the one that doesn't have block all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's how you all, I guess, also against uh, squish your teams. Just kind of threaten, makes it the threat of, don't stand next to me, don't base my player all the time, otherwise you'll get removed up a much more serious one. And yep. with the uh, blockless, so yeah, like it, it just sucks. Like you know, Seabros is like already down with two rerolls, right? And so is Strider. They're both on two rerolls. Uh, but, well, I mean, they start on two rerolls because they've both got a reserve. <laughs> so they have it down yeah. too. Um, so you know, all right, like lock pays off. Yeah, you you just don't want to you don't want to have to reroll the one in nines. I mean, that's that's also as simple as it gets as well. Yeah, rerolling one in nine sucks. Is. And uh, yeah, and these matchups, particularly against uh, stunty teams, against elves who sometimes just carry naked dodge players, but underworld, having block is very valuable. It's, it's effectively as good as um, tackle for knocking players over anyway. Mm. So, do you, do you, do you know, I wonder if uh, his cage should have been one higher? And then got the skink, get got the sneaky get in the cage as well, <laughs> because he's he, maybe he just leaves him lying down. Honestly, maybe he just leaves him down here, because I don't think uh, there's any way you can put him where he doesn't get blitzed. Mm, I don't think that was really worth it. Honestly. Yeah, honestly, I think I think the play was to have to have the cage bigger and then put the put the sneaky get in the cage as well. The high for a turn until you get another foul. I, I can see that. In some regards, maybe it's also valuable to treat it like a disposable player a little bit and just kind of use the fact that you get a lot of kind of free fouls and just try and get yourself more armor rolls. Just increase the odds you get one or two swords off because. That's so powerful. It's just getting one or two, especially in this mirror matchup. It is. It is. But you, you yeah. want assists, don't you? You just want assists. Like yeah. it's so, it's so shit fouling him in terms of you're not going to do anything to him, and then he's going to hit you with block. It's like yeah. it's like the thing rather than like you know you should foul with him every turn, but not if he's going to get you punched basically. And as we all know from Reddit, the way you beat lizard men is by hitting the skinks. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would seriously consider going after the skinks with the sneaky gift help you can get them down. Just go ahead and remove two or three of them um, if you can, because you have a, basically a free armor really against AP7. You're going, your, your microphone was going really fluctuating between being loud and quiet then, but uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, is this better? Yep. Uh, I don't know what was going on either. I will 
is attached to my face, so I have no idea why it would be changing based wow. on what's going on. That is strange, isn't it? I know. Imagine having a microphone just attached to your face all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's it's really weird. weird. Do you get strange looks from people in the street? Well, I just never go outside to avoid them, but uh, <laughs> I imagine that I would. <laughs> yeah. There I've goes never old seen Mike that face. Before. He's blitzing the skinks. Let's go. No removal. Did Reddit lie to me? Well, you know, we we didn't mention rule one is that you do have to get lucky and get the, uh, and then you remove them and then you're winning. You know, Reddit ah. just as typical skip the most important part of the step. So. Right. Not sure about taking the space over here. I think just just fight and fight and fight and hope you hope you do well. <laughs> um, hey, you're not dwarves. You don't have to take space, right? You have to make that block before you do this. I think. Yeah, push here seems pretty. Not okay, ideal. okay, he's doing that. He's doing that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like a one in nine there would have been disaster if he if he hadn't moved that Soros. <laughs> and he's only going to one D here. I, I you know, he doesn't even get to one D. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. You know, it's late enough in the drive to to give up this uh, this thing. I'd you know thrown in an assist and punched punch this guy and, and yeah. just caged. Carried on caging here and you know, make the push a bit later. But it's okay, isn't it? Like, he's it's he's not in a rush, not like he doesn't have to go there, but it's not bad to go there, is it? Yeah, I wonder if Strider will uh blitz this Saurus to get a Crox hit and then get Crocs on the ball. But, he um... could do that, he could also just. Maybe block with the Crocs and get a, a source to go into the front. He's got a couple of options. Um, maybe he hits the source on the left side so he can get some players to rotate back around the cage so it's not just completely free space. I think there's lots of things he can do. He, I mean, the nature of Blood Bowl, which is totally not an overly defensive game where the defense at this moment just has time. You can kind of do what they want because they know the offense doesn't actually want to score. It's really... It's really well, good implementation to similar to pro football in that way, where you're like, oh, no, it's fine. He might have all the space in the world, but it's not actually a panic or a five-alarm fire like it is in real life. Yeah. Oh, he follows into a 2D, and then he's going to have to 1D the Crocs, I guess. But this uh... is... He could bring a skink in for an assist, couldn't he? Yeah, I, I, he is going to. I'm, su I'm surprised he bothered, honestly. I'm surprised he bothered. But... Just the pal. I mean, the pal's letting him follow up on a two dice, right? So. Hmm. It's to maybe isolate the crocs a little bit. Yeah, well, this is the problem with, like, the pushing early, isn't it? Because now. Mm -hmm. He wants to. This is three players abandoned. That are getting out muscled by those Saurus from the other side. That said, if this is the turn, I'm a, okay, so the Blitz is going to be on this top source. Okay. Mm. I was going to say, I thought he, I thought in my head he had Blitz already. I was a bit confused as to why that skink was a. Uh, Apo? You still have it, even though it's a serious injury. Maybe it's hard, isn't it? This is hard. Like this is the hard one, right? Like if it's a badly hurt, you, you apple instantly. Yeah. But KOs are like, well, what if somebody gets cast? Oh my god, he got the he got the thirty-seven and a half percent chance. Look at dog C brawls. That's. I mean, that's pretty lucky, isn't it? That was a pretty lucky apple. Very lucky unlucky cast, to lucky get Apo. Yeah. yeah. Very unlucky to get cast, but very lucky. Cast. Oh, very lucky Apo. 
He might have to one die the crow. Like this is the problem with it, with this push, right? This push is like put him in trouble instead of just not pushing and being in a big scrum where he was like winning the scrum more. He, like he started to lose the scrum to to move away. But maybe you know, maybe he thought he was going to start losing the scrum anyway. So best to best to move before. There's um always the option when you are in this situation where he does always just give himself the chance that he can score early and then try and play defense with the full team. Maybe he thinks he can play defense better. Yep. If he thought the fight was already being lost, this, the worst case scenario here is you score a bit early as opposed to, well, I guess I'm losing the ball in midfield and everything is horrible because it skinks and something could go crazy wrong. So, yeah, um, I don't... It's probably not a good situation. I don't think he's happy in this situation, but kind of have to look at the... If you assume that you're going to lose the fight, it's probably worse to lose the fight in the middle against the full team than to lose the fight against an outnumbered defence. Yes, um, but better to score early past. than end the half 1-0 down, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's the, that's yeah. the main thing. Yeah. Uh, this is not a cage, Seabros. Okay. <laughs> Seabros going to the Elliot School of ch Caging there. Needed that 2 plus to uh, seal around the back. <laughs> Flip me. I mean, look, it was a blizzard, right? If it wasn't a blizzard, he would have just got a, a block on the blitz. But I mean, he was still very open to skinks, so he had to mm -hmm. he had to seal the back. Stand up's actually tragic for him, isn't it? The bonehead, because without like now without with that bonehead, um, Strider very easy to rotate, rotate yeah. all and get loads of heat on here potentially. He's straight. Seabros is almost going to have to score next turn unless there's some one and nine or quads action from Strider early in this turn. Yeah. Because otherwise, as you said, it's very easy with just like a simple chain push to basically bring out. Because of power with a chain push here, you can just rotate almost this entire source group over to the middle of the field. Yep. I want to feel three dice of skink. <laughs> he might want to, might he? Can the... I mean, the Croft could three dice the sneaky kid at the top he, he and can't. then base the ball. He can't. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I thought that, but I wonder if he... I mean, is this guy not activated? So he could just 1D this guy. Problem is with two rerolls, you don't really want to do a blockless one D. Oh yeah, I I, I forgot that. Dodge. I didn't see that dodge. Yeah, so I guess since you can't GFI in good weather, yeah, that skink just happens to be right in the way of getting. Uh, otherwise, I think that's uh, that's actually a very reasonable play. Yeah. That, to get both that... hit the sneaky get and base the ball carrier with tail. Yeah, I don't hate it. This this guy can come around the back. You can one D here, and then and then you can three D blitz with Crocs. It's it's not terrible. I think you might do it. You know, I think you might go for this skink one D. Like obviously, the skink one D is way better than the uh, Crocs dodge. Uh, sorry, Crocs GFI in the blizzard with long. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like he's going for it, or he's got some other set of skink blitz on at this point, so... Yeah. Oh, that doesn't work, because... It's, uh... That blocks it anyway, doesn't it? Maybe he's just going to, uh... Oh, is he going to... Okay, so he changes he chains him into there and he's just gonna do the GFI. Just GFI Blizzard GFI Blitz, okay. Fails. Inevitably <laughs> On a wonderfully fails on a two as well, so just to be very clear, it's specifically a blitz that should have changed the plan there. 
Yeah. Hey, thank you, Blood Bowl. Once in a while, <laughs> you do the right thing. I mean, it was nice getting that chain in. Like, the chain yeah. almost does force the score now, I guess, unless unless Seabrows gets unbelievably, incredibly greedy trying to surf this guy. <laughs> but surely he won't. Surely he'll just score. Yeah, I think he probably has to stall, score here. I don't think he'll do it. I mean, I guess he could How? get one more turn of stall. How good is it actually to try and surf this guy? Because the two dice... It could be three. a two into a one in a one, basically. Well, it would be a two into a two into a one. Yeah, I guess it would have been, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. You'd, you could always dodge off that skink as well, couldn't you? Maybe. It yeah. was a lot of dice. I think you just block him and score, honestly. It's, it's just nothing there, is it? I guess you could blitz that skink and try and pow it. And if you power it, you've got a Saurus to, to stall with, but I think just, uh... Because you can, you can block down here and free up this guy who tags there, and then this Saurus could have blitzed this skink, and if he powers, he could run around and... and, and uh, think. But then he, I guess he'd... Yeah, because if he pushed, he'd go there and not follow, and then he'd score. But if he powers, he goes up, runs through here, and then so maybe there could have been another turn of stall. But it was asking a lot. Yeah. Gets a removal there. You just do that block down there. Gets a removal. Comes back half the time, so solid. Mm -hmm. He's uh, one fifth of the way to Reddit's plan. Yep. Simply remove all the skinks. <laughs> what could be easier? I mean, who hasn't removed armor value 7 players every time they hit them? That's why Wood Elves and High Elf Catchers and Human Catchers and Pro Elves are all, and Skaven, are all so bad. Armor <laughs> value 7 players are so easy to get off the field. Yep. <laughs> there you go. I mean, he scores, he scores three bros, but he... Scored in five turns, so there's four turns left for Strider. He's happy with that in basically every way. I don't see how he's unhappy with that result. Oh yeah, Strider will be very happy, yeah. KO, but it's a spare player. He might have been fielding the Chameleon on offense anyway. Um, so it's probably not even an affected his offensive lineup for the next four turns for this uh, big score. Yep. And Dimmy G with a red, glorious. Hello, Dimmy. How are you, sir? Lovely to see the champ. Champ, 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 champ. Champ strats. It's a really exciting lizard mirror, mate. <laughs> Super exciting lizard mirror. Good coaching, though, isn't it? Good coaching, Strider and Seabrolls. Very solid. Strong and stable st uh, coaching so far. Yeah. Honestly, the reason that I don't like Lizards is that they're not strong and stable. No, it's... they're they're strong, and if something goes wrong, everything it's, it just everything falls apart somehow. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. It's really weird, because, like... They're so unbelievably strong at, at full strength. But yeah, you know, it's a dice game and it's so easy just to roll a 10 and then another 10. That, you know, and like they just, they can come back. The crazy thing is they can come back because they've got, you know, like if, if, if dwarves lose, you know, take three cards, then dwarves are screwed. But lizards at least have got the movement eight guys to do something as well. So like, they're resilient in that way, but I, I hate that they you know they've got few re rolls or few players and it's they do seem to be they're a bit like my Imperial Guard army where it was all, you know, Lehman Russ and Chimeras and stuff. And that people were like, Oh my god, this is so terrifying but you know, if they get lucky on their armor pen rolls, they just, just blew up all my tanks in one shit in one shit. In one shot. So uh that that's kind of a bit like what lizards are like, aren't they? They've got the super, super Here duper. Powerful. That that's yeah, I'll take I'll take your word for it that that's a good analogy. I'm not very familiar with um, first edition Warhammer 40k or whatever it was you were playing 50 years ago. Um, <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> wow, screw. Trust me, it's a perfect analogy. Yeah, somebody said like how how tough it was, and I said it's actually really fragile. Like it was, re- it was, and like this guy like laughed at me and thought I was an idiot. But like it was my my team was at, like my army was actually really fragile because you know it's if people just got lucky, they would blow up your tank. Like you could blow up a tank in one shot, and and so that's what it, and that's what these are like. You know, any 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 single player can just blitz. And Kazasaurus can't they? Like literally any player. I mean, unlikely that Snotling does, but still, it's even strength three players should be able to get enough assist to blitz a Saurus a turn, and and maybe foul them. Obviously, Underworld can get big fouls on, and Underworld can have like you know a, a Juggernaut mighty blow guy blitzing them, so can push them into big uh, big gang fouls and stuff. And I just I don't know. I feel like they're too fragile for me. Lizards. But when they're not losing anybody, they're just, they're unstoppable, aren't they? They're completely unstoppable when they're not losing players. Uh, lizards aren't quite win more, but they are, um, no, I will say, of all, like, the good teams, they are the most win more. Where if they are winning, they are super winning. Yeah. And if they Put out there. Yeah, the greatest team until they're not. Yeah, it's, they're, they're, they're a weird team, aren't they? They're a weird team. This is... so I guess I just lose because the strength four guys with Mighty Blow did in fact get a couple of removals. So well, that was fun. Fun and interactive game with Saurus. Yeah. Yeah, you cut out for a bit there, Skrull, but I, I mean, I guess there's nothing you can do about it. The, the perils Again, of I having don't. a microphone on your face. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> no. I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll count it for Discord being weird the past two days and take no personal responsibility. Fantastic. Uh, so, four assist foul here. This is pretty nice. See, like, this is the thing, right? Four assist foul for Seabros here. There we go. Instant removal. No send off. Will he, will he Necronome up all this? Maybe he should, but he's, it's already a tough drive, right? There's only three turns left. Maybe he doesn't apple it. And he does apple it, so there you go. There you go. That was a tough apple to make, honestly. Only three more turns to score, but you, you know, like, so he's going to what? He's going to do nothing turn six anyway, so he's only standing up on turn seven. That was an interesting call to apple that, but it was only going to have one chance to get it back for the second half, wasn't he? That's and, correct, yeah. And I guess ultimately, if, if you apple in the second half, who really cares because it's only coming back for overtime. It's not helping you win the second half if you know if you apple at Kaz. So, interesting. Now you've already seen that there's a very good chance that a casualty is just a seriously injured anyway. Yeah. So are you really going to wait for that casualty and that serious injury to show up and have to make the same like gamble that Seabras did? Exactly. Or you just want to take this KO and guarantee you don't, you know, half the time this player, they turn that from it to 100% that you're getting them back likely yeah. in the second half. I hate the Apo now. It's it's super annoying. It's just super annoying. Like, it's... I know it's not that much difference, right? It's a 37 and a half instead of a 50. But still, it, it's enough that it... You know, every every percents count, doesn't it? And as, as, as Scott Steiner says... <laughs> you know, so you do need it, it does make a difference I guess your chameleon goes ahead I think I don't think he needs to stay behind because you've got two free sauras here so I don't you probably don't need. Like, I think it'd be better to have another skink ahead of the ball. So I imagine that's the, the chameleon's job. Puts him in more in harm's way, and you'd rather you'd rather the chameleon die than the others. <laughs> I guess the thing is, when you've got ten k left on your roster that you can't do anything with. 
you're not really paying 10k for the chameleon skin quite that like i guess that that makes him he's a lot better in naf style because you're not actually paying 10 more tb for him <laughs> effectively no you're just paying a movement penalty right because he's seven versus eight that's what you're paying for yeah. a passing ability so and skills that people super care about like i mean on the ball is fine. I, I forget what the other is. Shadowing is the other one. Yeah, shadowing. Yeah, nearly it nearly it nearly did something versus Ori Lenses. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> ne but only nearly. Hello, Benny Bartes. The problem is if Soros will move five, then you probably have to make them like thick skull or something so that they didn't go down. And like thick skull would suit them, wouldn't it? Because, like, they're slow and stupid in, in Warhammer, so, like, Thick Skull would, would suit them quite nicely. But it's, um, it's kind of funny how often they're like, how do we, how do we fix this player without making the worst? Let's give Black Orcs Thick Skull. Let's give <laughs> Saurus Thick Skull. Let's give Ogres Don't... We just, everyone just loves stack. let's give mummies Thick Skull. We just love stacking Thick Skull to make players slightly less likely to get removed yeah. all the time. Yeah, it's. I think oh, well, it's one of the better balanced decisions. Uh, you know, if you're Rick, you can give it to a high elf thrower, can't you? <laughs> but I think it. I think it fits. I think it fit for Black Orcs, you know, because they're like they're tough and uh, and it didn't make them better at low TV, while making them better at high TV, right? So I thought I thought it worked thematically and mechanically to improve black oaks whereas you know changing the biggins and making them move five is is very 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 powerful doesn't gfi blitz there i thought he was going to gfi blitz there honestly i i quite liked getting a skink assist in and three dice blitzing him so interesting that he hasn't done that that makes me not know where he's going to but oh maybe he's going to blitz uh this saurus and then move the crocs in or blitz uh, with the crocs okay. and, and you could or do whatever that. yeah you must be blitzing this guy to try and move the crocs, I guess. Well, yeah, there's no need to do any... It is funny how much worse making three plus dodges for a one dice block feels for skinks when I feel like there were elves or something with these odds, you'd be considering it more often, though I suppose you have block on those hits, but... Oh, wait. Wizards just never really it's feel time. obliged to consider it. He's one ding the ball. He's just one ding the ball. He's he's one ding the ball. Okay, we are doing. That. Maybe he's surfing him. Is he is he gonna no? Because it'd be a it'd be a, oh he, he could uphill and then surf the ball. Oh my god, is he going for the up? No, no, he's oh what he's uphill the ball. What? Why did you uphill it, Seabros? No, he's uphill the crocs. He has uphill the crocs. He's gone for the surf. He's gone okay. for the surf. Okay, that looked like that was a blitz, didn't it? To me, anyway. yeah, no, no, I, I, it looked exactly. I know exactly what you thought. Yeah, you're like, oh, he moved in there. To me, it looked like he was uh, blitzing the Crocs from my two and I was very confused. I had to put it together that he was doing the chain play. So, yeah, no, thanks. Right. Oh, he's using thanks, the UI. sneaky gift. Not sure about that. Gets the push. He's done it. <laughs> Amazing, wild play, and he might get the counter score now if if this is a favorable throw in. Doesn't look it. <laughs> oh no, it is! It is! Ah! The crowd goes wild! <laughs> Amazing! The crowd love an aggressive lizard play. Love it. Holy him. moly. Oh no, Sea Rose. Oh no. He's just still in range though. One, two, three, four, five, oh, yeah. GFI. He's still in range. Wow. Yeah, I saw the play, uh, but then it looked like I just thought that guy had blitzed. And then I was like, why have you done it from there if that's an uphill? Like, I thought he was blitzed. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I saw the play to, to chain him and then get the surf. But then when he. Then that, I just. That looked like a blitz to me because the hit happened, like, so yes. quickly after he'd moved it in. And then I thought, mm -hmm. well, why is he blitzed from there if that's an uphill when he could have just come in and blitzed it for the 1D? If you're not going to surf him, it doesn't make any sense. But he, no, he was going for the surf. Very nice. Very nice from C Browls. But he might, he might oh, pay for it. That's a wonderful fight. He might pay it's, for it. Um, 
That may have been a situation where because the UI allows you to click and select players before an action has completed on the screen, you're thus able to uh, call it up almost instantly, which can make it a touch more confusing as a spectator Yes. Um, yeah. as to what's going on. Um, yeah, which point. could lead to moments like certain reviewers saying, what the fuck is going on when they look at Blood Bowl 3? Which is <laughs> still one of my favorite moments for the game's PR. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I guess it was right for Sebo to do the two GFIs, like even though he didn't have to do them to get in range or anything, like double GFIing and standing on the ball really helps, doesn't it? Was it GFIs to stand on the ball or to stand yeah. okay. Then yeah, being on the ball here is quite valuable. Yeah, I think it was worth it, just unlucky to double them. Now he's got a now he's got a one DM <laughs> roll of full pal <laughs> and then pick it up and score. Easy. I guess the to use a Dio phrase, the equity shift from getting a score is much greater than just stop it guaranteeing a stop of the score here. Yeah. Uh, and it's probably worth it. And it's also too hard to really stop a score in a situation with two skinks in scoring range. Yep. So you just go ahead and go for go for the six up, make the score as hard as you can on the back end, and just try and go up to zero in a very, very challenging half for Strider. Mm -hmm. And boy, I'm sure if Strider lost this game, whoever got them in their next round would be super happy <laughs> with that result. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, somebody's... Oh, wow. Somebody who lost in the first round is going to be feeling pretty bad when they get the loser of this match. <laughs> Aren't they? So, yeah, I think you just 3D this skink. 3D the camo skink. The other skink's down. So, you can actually just run this skink around, 3D the camo skink, then then 2D the source. Then he's got no scoring threats at all, right? Unless he chains his crocs somehow. Yeah, he could chain the crocs, but... Unlikely. Oh, we just hit with that one. Uh, I don't know. I like three dicing and, and then two dicing the souls. Yeah, three dice and then you also means you save an activation, so now you have to do the blitz if you want to knock down the souls. Maybe he just doesn't respect the soar scoring threat. Also, yeah. the camo skink is still in scoring range. I guess it was. Was it always in scoring range? No. Uh, yeah, it was always in scoring range with GFIs. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. If he, no, 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 no. If he'd pushed it back, if he'd hit from here, it would have been out of scoring range. One, two, three, four. GFI, GFI. It would have been out of range because it's a camo yeah. skink. <laughs> yeah. So he just. It didn't matter where he blocked it. He just pushed it the wrong square. And he, he might not have recognized that it was a camo skink and might not have recognized the movement difference, so that could be understandable, but... But even then, right, it's a misclick on the push direction. Yeah. E even then, it's the yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 GFI, so even then, it would still be an extra GFI. But he was going for then the 1D pal. Yeah, so a mistake or a misclick. Yeah. Yeah, not like a terrible one, right? Just a, no. Just a slight whatever. Here we go. 30% to get the pal isn't bad, is it? I guess you don't reroll the no. double down, though. I guess you don't. I guess you just don't reroll. Maybe you do. Maybe you even do reroll the double down. Honestly, maybe you do, because the power's just You're... so amazing. Well, now you reroll the push. There we go. Like the double down stops the score almost a hundred percent, doesn't it? Yeah. So, but I guess you would. I guess you would have rerolled it for the power. Yeah. Yeah, you reroll for the POW, and the push is already rather unlikely to score. The player's down, and the typically skinks do have it passing, and having to do some handoff stuff, it's probably okay to not risk having your own player removed. Okay. Um, they just go ahead and POW hunt to try and go up and win. Yeah, 30%, then like 20%, and then two GFIs is... Oh god, about 14% to score there, I think it was. No, sorry, 17, yeah, no, 14%. 14%, I'm going to say. 30% then 20%, you said? Cause, oh, because you're looking for a POW with a reroll? A, pa a POW then the pickup. 
This is sort of like that oh, makes the it power, tiny. Oh, the yeah. pickup would, yeah, the pickup would be, yeah, so the pickup's sixty percent. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a new Indiana Jones, yeah, yeah. It's like it's with old boy Harrison Ford. I remember them talking about it. He was like he was doing like a press conference in a typical Harrison Ford way where he's like, I fucking hate everything about acting. <laughs> but I want I just money. wanna go home and smoke pot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were gonna give Harrison me... Ford wants to go back to living a life of being Han Solo. <laughs> he's just good to go back to doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny how just every single thing he's the same he's just like yeah they gave me 14 million so I did this I've got zero passion for it whatsoever <laughs> please let this interview end <laughs> say what you want about Harrison Ford he uh, is not shy about letting you know when he is bored or does not agree with the creative direction or something <laughs> if you want any more proof just go listen to that model Go listen to his uh, narration in Blade Runner. It's something. <laughs> He's like, uh, who, who, was the, who was the guy in the NFL who was like, I'm just here so I don't get fired? Uh, Marshawn Lynch. There you go. He's, the, he's more like the Marshawn Lynch of movies. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get fined. Did I say fired? Yeah. Yeah, I'm only doing he's this so I don't get fine. fined. Yeah, yeah. Because he got like he got fined us for not doing for not, which is fair. Like you know, there was some uh, there was some uh, tennis player, wasn't there? I can't remember her name, and she like she withdrew, I think, from a major because she didn't want to have to do the press conference and stuff. And they were like, and they were and like loads of people were on her side, like saying it's stupid. She should just be allowed to play tennis. And it's like, yeah, but she you know she's made like you know <laughs> say say you know 20 million dollars in prize money the reason that they get that prize money is because they have to do the, the speaking part <laughs> so, no, nobody yeah. like you know they wouldn't have the same money in it if all they did was have to play the sports so i don't know i don't know if some if i if i had won 20 million for for, for you know hitting a ball i wouldn't care about talking to somebody <laughs> Personally, I didn't have a lot of sympathy for it. <laughs> it can be, it can sometimes be hard to recognize that uh, they aren't paid so much for their skill, exactly as much as they are paid for the fact that their skill is marketable, and then brings advertising. So really, you're just a marketing device. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Which can be not the most comforting thing to perhaps realize. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Janos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do um, sports reporters not get um, access to locker rooms to get quotes and talk immediately after the game in the UK? Nope. Hmm. No, it's we, a long standing tradition in the US. Yeah, no, we we only see that in movies. <laughs> we only see that in American movies. That's how we know that it's a thing. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. Yeah, no, um I mean coaches are like they'll get not quite run out of town, but you will get uh, motherfucked for even like choosing to not answer questions with the press or telling your players not to talk to them. Mm. Uh, who was it? Uh, coach for uh, USC, the University of Southern California. Which boy, if there's a city where you don't want to tell the press to uh, not get to, to tell people to not not talk to the press, LA is like up there with like New York. Is maybe don't do that if you want to ingratiate yourself with local <laughs> media. <laughs> Tell you what, C Rose would have liked this this defense to, to get his sneaky get foul in, wouldn't he? <laughs> this was a, a very uh, abandoning the LOS kind of setup here, wasn't it, from C Rose? I wonder why he did that. He's also used a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, customizations here, hasn't he? C Rose made this team look pretty mm -hmm. pretty, uh, just the same as Elliot did. Nice to see people using the uh, using the customizations. Yeah, the uh, the skull helmets are quite nice. They are, you know, quite noticeable. Yeah. Of the, um, I, I think they're also a bit noticeable from behind. Which for 
level three customization is a pretty big thing. So that's not always yeah. the case. Yeah, yeah, it is very noticeable. Yeah. I wonder if I should play this. No, this angle's too high, isn't it? This, this is the correct angle. <laughs> I just thought I was. It just seemed a little bit odd the angle, and I thought I wonder if there's a one in between this and you know too high, but there wasn't. So I, <laughs> I'm okay. We're still working on how to have um, you know free cam controls and make them usable as as a video game uh, medium. So <laughs> honestly, know, the Q and E is not here yet. The Q and E yeah. is brilliant. Like that's so good. Like, uh, and I don't care how basic it is. It's absolutely brilliant. It's like so much better than Blood Bowl Two. Like there are things that are a lot better than Blood Bowl Two. Yes, for sure. And that is one of them. Ooh, another stupid from C Browse. The Croxes have not been very good this game. Which, if you're trying to high roll, you kind of want them to be. Hmm. We've got a sneaky get be DP a foul. Source, I have to imagine. Yeah. Four assists. <laughs> Does the run up? Oh, gone. Injured. And it's a badly hurt, but uh, you know, unlike unlike uh, Necronome, Strider will I don't think will regret his right because th he's down a player here. Even if he's got, even if he had the Apo here, he's one nil mm -hmm. down, and he's a player down, and, and the Apo working wouldn't have made a difference, right? And if he hadn't Appled that KO, maybe the KO is out, and maybe he's down two Saurus. And it doesn't yeah. really matter that he's going to get that guy back, so I think he won't regret the uh, the KO. And I guess for that reason, Necronome shouldn't have regretted the KO either, because um, that's the thing, isn't it? It's it's a real tough. It's a real tough. Uh... Wait, he's doing a gym kit. Okay, no, he's got another. I thought he's doing a gym kit then for a second. <laughs> but he did have a free player. Yeah, I mean, even if he had the Apo for that removal, well, congratulations, you will still be missing him for the next nine turns. I'm sure you're thrilled. Yeah, yeah, I, that's the thing. Like, you know, one nil down, he's looking at just going out and and not not having him for overtime at all. It would be better to have him for, you know, that would have worked out better, right, if he'd got him for overtime. So, like, it, it could have worked out better saving the Apo, but then, you know, that KO could have failed to come back, in, the, in which case... He'd be down two Saurus now, which would be, you know, very much on the cusp of losing. It's still very much in the balance, isn't it? I mean, it was great play by Seabrows to get that surf. Yeah, it's also something that I'm sure Strider is familiar with Seabrows, but it can be something that affects you mentally. Like, oh, my opponent actually can find weird plays, which means that I have to be even more careful about how I set up my cages and protect my ball. Because mm. otherwise... Because, <laughs> you know you do realize, like, oh, I was a bad roll away from having lost this game in the first half. Yeah. It was very close. Yeah, unbelievably close. I mean, because, like, Seabros double won, right? Like, the, most mm -hmm. of the time, Seabros would have got there, st stood next to the ball, and then and then that Strider would have had to have dodged to get there and picked it up in a tackle zone and, you know, could have very easily failed. And then Seabros would have just needed a 3-plus to move him and then a 3-plus pick up and scored. So, like, Seabros was so close to winning, well, winning the game in that half, really, 2-0. Yeah. Certainly being completely favoured um, yes, for the next yeah. eight turns. It yeah. wouldn't have been over, but it would, have, yeah. it would have been very close to over. I hate not standing up these Saurus, by the way, because I really don't think he's going to GFI both of them. So I think you have to stand up those Saurus just in case, like, this quad skulls. First of all, I wouldn't want to reroll dub skulls, right? So I'd want to stand mm -hmm. them up in case I dub skulled, and I would finish off the rest of my turn in case a dub skull there because I just don't want to reroll a dub skull with, with overtime looking likely. Maybe you do reroll it, but um either way it's looking like like overtime is pretty likely, I think. I feel like there might have been a slight mistake on that block if you're taking the both down instead of the push. Is the push direction's pretty bad. Um mm -hmm. maybe there was some maybe you should have blocked the other one so you can take the push there and separate, but Yeah. Or maybe you need a block from the square to the left so that you can take a push and separate the one that's on the skink. Not sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I would Not like sure. to. I would have liked to have got that one off, but um, whichever, I think he should have. Yeah, he should have done all the safe moves first. 
funny isn't it like that's the thing right we've got two of the best coaches in the competition here and I said if you had somebody sitting who's terrible at blood ball and all they said to you was stand up your players before you do anything else it it would make them play better and he would have played better then because he just stood those players up before he did that blitz like it's crazy isn't it it's crazy that like it is definitely better to have moved all those players first like just a hundred percent Unequivocally, one hundred percent better to have to have stood those two saurus up and put them where they were going. Unless play. there is a specific play that we didn't see that he was waiting for, if he got a pow and needed to GFI one of the saurus, which I can't imagine. Um, there's yeah, there was no reason not to do it. So, but yeah, it is absolutely one of the things where you. I think you can kind of get in your head after all, like, well, I don't want maybe I want a GFI this player. Maybe I just shouldn't stand up. Cause the clock's on. Rather than spend the extra five ten seconds to think about whether or not you need to stand them up or not, you just do the thing that's going to work ninety five percent of the time. Yeah, ninety seven percent of the time. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's it's easy done. It's it's really easy to just not you know to not I and, and yeah, may, you know sometimes you do have plans, right? You know sometimes you have a plan mm -hmm. with a, with a GFI and stuff, but I really can't believe he did then and and you know yeah. and and i'm sure you know every top player will will do that at least once a game they, they'll they'll have you know they'll misorder that and it, even if it's slight you your play would be improved by an absolute an absolute penguin just sitting in, in on your headset saying stand up your players first <laughs> Like that seems so crazy how basic we are that that would help, <laughs> but I think it yeah. undoubtedly would. I wonder if there's a chair now. Not really. No, no, no. It'd be crazy dice, but yeah, I mean, it's dice. probably like how a lot of uh, poker players, even in tournaments, who are doing great, could be have their play improved by someone in their ear saying. Stop talking. Don't say anything. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Don't say anything. Yeah. Don't respond. Stop talking. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. And even the ones who are good at talking, right? Some of them, yeah. some of them talking adds to their uh, play, you know, but then but then, you know, we've all seen we've all seen them talk their way out of <laughs> talk their way out of hands as well but like you know that's mm -hmm. that's interesting because you know that that's that's a bit like you live by the sword you die by the sword they are getting things yeah. from the talking sometimes so yeah that's harder to say that they did the wrong thing talking because sometimes it would have worked you can't use results based oh, yeah. analysis but yeah some people they're talking is is usually pretty shit <laughs> So I, I like I like getting him in there. Yeah, yeah, I like this. I like this a lot more than trying something a bit more adventurous. Just get in, get the foul. <laughs> Doesn't even activate the crocs. I guess he's sick of, sick of his crocs going stupid. <laughs> yeah. And that, this is good because it, it adds... It, with with Strider being on offense, it asks a bit more of Strider trying to solve that little... That little uh, thing. It's really bad that they're, that, that they're just behind each other like this, isn't it? <laughs> like, you know, these, at least these are facing each other and stuff, and then these two are just like, hello. <laughs> Scaly boys rise up. Um... <laughs> Having themselves some fun. <laughs> Timed. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Brilliant. For what it's worth, I think, um, in terms of modeling, I think I prefer these sores to the uh, level two sores. I think they look overall better. I think they do a better job of being big and strong, but all and also looking fast and sleek, unlike in BB two, where they're just giant top-heavy monster things. 
Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they, they did kind of change Saurus, right? Um, mm -hmm. in, in the models as well, like the Games Workshop yes. models, they changed a bit, and yeah, I yep. agree. I think these look. I think I think the skinks. I think well, I think in Blood Bowl one they look good as well, right? I think they've looked. I think the Saurus have looked good. Uh, the Saurus, oh my god, lizard men. I'm just saying skinks and Saurus instead of lizard men. I think lizard men yeah. have always been a, a like a top looking team. The only problem that I have with them is the the the, the like the forced blue. You know, I really kind of yeah. hate the force blue. I feel like if they, if you could change their skin color, that would be absolutely amazing. I, I do kind of hate the force yeah. blue. Yeah, I'd love to see. Maybe what it should be is, um, you know, you could have just treat the uh, coloring on this paint, and you could pick one of the colors would be their um, scale color, and then would be the paint that's over that. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Um, yeah, the force blue isn't necessary because you could see gold or green or. Red lizards just off the top of my head, or black lizards even. So. Yeah. Oh wow, a Kaz, which one is it? It's Seabro. No, it's not. Seabro's is red, isn't he? Seabro's is red. Ooh. So that is a Croxigot Alpha Strider. There's a serious injury too, so I don't think he would have been re-rolling that, but that is looking mm. more and more likely as we possibly go to overtime that someone's going to get a really fun draw of Strider in the distant second round. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine oh you lose your first game and now your second game is stride run lizards. Amazing. The ball is not fit safe. We've got an instant 1D. It's uh, And it's a 3 plus 2. Oh, no, it's not actually because you have to cancel that. So it's two 3 pluses um, to 2D it. So pretty pretty easy. You'd probably go for it again, I guess. He can, he can get some powers, I think, to... Uh, oh, can he surf it plus, again? Right? Can he surf it again, right? P punch this one up, and then punch it, punch it down, and like do I know he just he can't have he can't have enough players for that. Like it'd be in, he's, he's only got three skinks. Sorry, ignore that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he can just roll some two dice blocks though, to so he doesn't have to uh, make the dodge. Yeah, answer, yeah, yeah. Make some dodges to do the assist anyway. Yeah, so just one dodge to get the two D is pretty nice. So now he does have to. No, no, he he he's had to do the three plus anyway, doesn't he? Yeah, he he tried. If he got pals, he could have. But he's gonna have to do a three plus in. It's gonna have to be with the skink as well. Uh, the skink, the sneaky get as well, right? Because he's he he's kind of blocking the path. Yeah, he's in the way, isn't he? Yeah, so he's he's got to just go in, makes it. And then this one is also one dodge to do the hit. Gets it. Doesn't get the pow. Does he re-roll? Probably not, eh? Probably not. Probably. Uh... I can see you taking your time to think on this. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah, this is a great part of a, another great thing about Blood Bowl 3 come back to Blood Bowl 2 is you had those shitty 30 second things to decide whether it, I hated that. So if this was Blood Bowl 2, Seabros would have to be sitting here for like, you know, a minute or whatever thinking about whether he's going to re-roll this before he blitzes and then if he rolls a pow he just takes it anyway, right? Like totally stupid. Whereas at least in this like you can just make the blitz and then think about it, it if you don't get the pow. So that's way more. Andy could think for five minutes if he wanted, couldn't he? So that is so yeah. much better. There's also just the human factor that is undeniable that you can sit there and tell yourself ahead of that block, I am not going to reroll it, I'm not going to reroll it, and then you'll get it and it'll be a skull push, and you're like, you'll sit there and you're like, no, fuck it, I'm rerolling it. Now that I've actually seen the result, no, that's actually really bad. So this could seeing be... the result is different. Yep, and this could be really bad. This could be like two or three skinks surfed for sea brawls here. I'm thinking this might have been... <laughs> this could have been not the best play. This could Perhaps be three skinks. Perhaps an overextension. Yeah, yeah, this could be three skinks surfed here. He has a spare, but he's going to get two KO recovery rolls. But... <laughs> <laughs> And it's probably not because he probably has to do. He probably has to mm, block with the ball. It's actually no, it's tricky because now the ball carrier is involved. He was probably Strider was thinking this, you know, oh, this is looking great, but now he's probably got a one D here that uh, 
and you know hope for a pow. He rolls a skull, and he gets the ball. That yeah, this was the problem because like he, you know how do you protect the ball after this? So like we, yeah. we we both thought the same kind of thing in real time. Like whoa, I'm getting to serve three skinks, and then like wait a minute, if I do this, <laughs> what happens to my <laughs> ball? He's just got like I've freed a ball of his saurus. <laughs> He's just gonna smash my ball carrier with two dice with block, and uh, yeah. So he, now he's got to Seabros, his ball carrier two dice with block. Yeah, Seabros chains him out, and and in instant two D or three D. In fact, he can three D him with block, it, probably into a follow pit and stuff as well. Oh, really, 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 real mess for um, real mess for uh, for stripe that Strider is in. Safe move first, love to see it. Now obviously here not standing up the skink is fine, right? Because he yes. might be doing something later. So this is one of the situations where the idiot in your ear wouldn't help you. But um <laughs> No, this is the point where you're like, Yeah, I know I should stand him up, but I'm about to knock the ball over and it means I need to have all my reactive players as few of them activated before the ball is out as possible. Yeah. I need to know what's going to happen. Yeah. And he gets the he gets the two D and he gets the pow. And the ball has come out surrounded by Seabrosaurus. <laughs> so pretty good. Ooh, that's a nice pow, especially considering who was taking that block. Yeah. Oh, this. And now I guess you get to you get to kill the chameleon skink maybe too. No, you you already blocked, so you can't hit. Well, you could I guess block it, but. I. Th I think probably dodging off with that to try and get the ball is the best. Yeah, it's because it's two, it's two dice block. I guess you can use the skink to assist the, on the Saurus on the top to knock it over, maybe. Um, to pin it to the sideline as well. I'm not sure what Sneaky Git does. Yeah, so maybe I comes think... around to tag. Yeah, I think you come here, block this one, and then you dodge this off and then block him. And, and or, or or come around with a sinking git and then dodge, but whichever way, like I think, I think it's looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, maybe the maybe the sneaky git, maybe you use the one on the bottom to tag the chameleon skink, and then the sneaky git goes to dodge. To uh, okay, we're gonna use him first. I would have maybe first. <laughs> hmm. I think I'd have. I think I would have followed what you were saying and used that skink to try and pick up the ball. Um, use the oh. chameleon skink. But, oh, yeah. well he's done this. All right. You keep that real. I don't think. Well, the thing is, if you pick it up, it's so strong, isn't it? Like, and, and yeah, you know, yeah. Strider is reduced to rolling dice at this point to have a chance. He's got three turns left. The way he, the way he wins is by like scattering it, getting a good scatter, rolling some dice with his skinks. So if you get the ball now, he's got to somehow power you and roll all of the dice on top. So it adds so much that I think uh, I do. I did like going for the ball as well. To be fair, it was tough, tough to work out. The best way of doing it, but um, you know, who who knows? We don't have Blood Bowl stockfish. Um, no. And that was probably pretty good. Like as long as you, I think I think getting a chance to pick it up is really good. Like I really do. But then you know, move, just blocking things. You know, putting that Saurus on the sideline and blocking his other skink was also good as well. It's like really tough to call. Yeah, I think. There were lots of reasonable ways to handle those final three skinks, um, and all of them involved it being good to have not moved the sneaky git at the beginning of the turn, not, not automatically set them up. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, big Chi Chi, yeah, yeah, Sea Bros is the Red Lizards, yeah, and then, and they're both blue, <laughs> to be fair, like, they've both got blue skin, so it, Lizard Mirrors are a bit, bit dodgy, aren't they? Yeah, I would have, I would have loved lizard skin to be a color. It would have been, it would have been yeah. so good. Like I can, I can understand that it, it, it could look too garish. Is probably what they were thinking, right? Like they didn't yeah. want it to look too garish, but. But you know what? I think it actually would be kind of awesome to have lizards from like the jungle lizard thing to look pretty garish, because you know, things in the jungle look pretty fucking garish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it fits like there's there's all sorts of colors of Saurus in, yeah. in in the real world as it were so <laughs> so it would fit. I, I can't remember which spawning is the blue one, but like you know, just having them all from one spawning that play Blood Bowl seems really weird. I 
I mean, they're also doing um, lots of... It's a pretty obvious thing that they're doing a bunch of stuff like of based built around like Mayan or taking inspiration from like Mayan and Incan and Aztec culture, and they have those are exceptionally colorful traditional color palettes with like purple and green and blue and teal. So, should be using those. Yep. Yep. This is looking so good. See, Rod probably just got to uh, take a few minutes to get to calm down. <laughs> This is, yeah, this is absolutely when you can kind of take your foot off the gas pedal. So taking him out of here to refocus and make sure you're just doing what you need to do to lock this game away. Yeah. Is important. This does slightly open up you getting served here. But, you know, again, if he's doing that, he's not making plays for the ball. So I just don't think yeah. you care about possibly. I see. I, I would. I prefer not putting him there. Like, I, like I, I get why you put him there to not give up the instant surf. But I think I think it's okay. I think if he's surfing, he's not going for your balls, and if he's not going for your balls, he's losing because your ball is caged by Saurus, and, and you know, like it's oh, he's no, he's running away. Ooh, okay, well, he's completely free. He's completely free, and he's in range. Okay. Yeah. Man. Oh. He's not completely free, is he? Because this is a 6-6. Six, 2-2 six, two, two to hit the ball. <laughs> it's a 6-6-2-2 six, six, two, two to hit the ball. And, I mean, Strider has to go for it. Yeah, I don't... There's not a chain push I see that could be on. I don't... No, well, maybe, Free up anything. maybe. He, he can punch him to go to there and then fill this and this and then he punches him oh, and this and then he like punches it all out, right? Oh, not this one, this one. So you have these two. And in fact, that fills anyway. He punches him and that fills that one. So you need to that fill and then... No, he just took a serve. I don't... Okay. <laughs> oh, it's just six 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 two two. I mean, doing all those chains only only saves you a six plus dodge anyway. <laughs> like it's not exactly yeah. that good. <laughs> yeah, there's not really. Well, do you? Yeah, I don't. I can't see what the pattern would look like at the end, so I'll take your word that it's a, a six plus. So it just say the six plus, so yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know how you'd have done it as well. Like you, you might you might have had to have like you know dodged a Saurus in to even do it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. So probably they probably look you probably looked at it and then thought this is going to be too hard to work out. I'll just I'll just double six plus. <laughs> yeah. It could be one of those things where I might just. Do the first two steps and like, all right, no, this is impossible. I can't figure it out. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> bail, bail, bail. Eject, eject, eject. Six plus six plus. Oh, we lost. Well, I wish I was better. <laughs> yep. Where's K Fog? Who said, "Ha ha! This is so easy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know how to move the six one turn with just five players? It's very simple. You just need four frenzy. <laughs> well, there you go. Seabros gets the win. And, uh, you know, I mean, it is, it is, yeah, 100% done because if there's a riot or anything, there's only one turn left. So, yeah, amazing, amazing scalp for Seabros here in a, in a mirror as well. Yeah, there's um, no longer, um, I, no, no, it's not technically over. He needs a riot, one turn, riot, uh, counter score to go to oh, overtime. Yeah, 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 or a blitz. No, no, the blitz doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he needs a riot. <gasps> One turn. And then a second riot to counter score. And then a second one turn on the riot. Uh, does he need a, a one, another one turn on the riot? Oh, no, no, he, no, he doesn't. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. 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 yeah. No. All right, so it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. Because <laughs> it used to be you would be betting for the blitz. Yeah. But you can't get a blitz counter score anymore, so yeah. it's no longer an option. Yeah. 
Oh man. Because you can't have an. I guess. Well. Yeah, you could have. You could have a blitz, couldn't he? If you got the riot here, and then he scores in one, he's got one turn left. So then he could get a blitz and move somebody in range, and then he could score in his one turn. So yeah, he he could get. He can get a riot yeah. now, and then a riot or a blitz to get yeah. two two. Technically possible. Um, yeah, I guess. Yes, that's the possibility. A, a lot um, less likely than the six six two two. I bet the six six two two wasn't even that unlikely. I mean, no, it has to be more likely than getting a riot, right? Because yeah. a riot and a blitz, because a riot is a one in thirty six itself. So you're betting for that same thing basically with the six six. So yeah, no, it has to be. Well, I mean, I just mean I bet it's not that unlikely overall. Yeah, six yeah. percent. That's not even that crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I still remember there. I think it was might have been a Crucifer final where he scored and he was up, putting himself up two zero. I'm like, no, no, actually, you the best play was to not score and be up one zero so that you remove the chance for your opponent to get a riot and then a blitz or something nonsense <laughs> to win, which is such a crazy thing about kickoff events. Yeah. No, no, the best move is to not score and not put yourself up an insurmountable lead with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to be up two touchdowns with one turn left. That, that you could still lose from there somehow. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he did. He did bring back the the, the chameleon, so Seabros did have to score there. <laughs> Funnily yeah. enough, if if you're wondering about this match, Seabros <laughs> did have to go two and a lot. Yeah, exactly. Get the ref. So now it is over. He just ends the turn. I think. Free bribe, a bribe which had been so useful for all the times the ref caught the sneaky git. It'd be yeah. great. Yeah, that would have been that would have been massive. I it could have been massive, couldn't it? It could have been it could have been massive one way or the other, right? Because now all of a sudden Strider's fouling every turn and, yeah. and you know, who knows what could have happened, just a hell of a lot of variance. I'm surprised it's it's Strider here, we should just end the turn, shouldn't he? I mean maybe he wants to just mess around, but it's a waste of time. There's no star player points or anything. You know, sometimes you just want to take some blocks if you get some casualties to <laughs> make it feel like you did something, feel a bit better about the game. Get some yeah. one dice to see if you can just kill something. <laughs> get some SPP that'll never count. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's go. One minus two dice. The yeah, there we go. One dice the drops. Let's just mess around. See what you right. can do. Cheeky foul. Time briefers. Yeah. Disgusterous. It's fair enough, right? You're playing the game. It's. It's not too bad, but I mean, I tend to end the turn in these situations. But sometimes you just forget, right, and just think, oh, well. And sometimes I've conceded in this situation things. before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, concede's fine, right? I don't know what the rules are on us actually conceding. Like, I literally don't even understand. I don't even know what the rules are, but, like, he could have just conceded after the failed Crocs blitz, couldn't he? But I'll have to check the rules for conceding, honestly. Because, yeah. my, like, I would have... Like, that just saves time, right, doesn't it? It just literally saves time after he fails that dodge, just conceding. Technically, you know, there was a chance with a double right, etc. But, honestly, you're mostly just just saving time if you concede after that failed dodge. So, yeah, interesting. Interesting point. I'll have to check the rules for conceding, honestly. Because, <laughs> like, touchdown well, different doesn't matter at all or anything, you know? Like, none of that matters. Yeah. That's difference, touchdown I'm, difference. I'm sure maybe Stryer was just thinking that, you know, he's already conceded twice in the past uh, past day. He didn't want to get banned for uh, 12 hours. And <laughs> oh, yeah. Being able to play his next match. <laughs> yeah, imagine if they counted for that. <laughs> that would be amazing. Right. Well, there you go. Um... So there you go. I mean, see, I think Seabros has won some NAF style tournaments anyway in tabletop as well. You know, so it, well, it wasn't just uh, it wasn't just uh, tabletop versus you know online blood bowl. And Lock Strider is level ninety seven, and he's played a lot of fumble as well. So you know, they're both they're both online and tabletop. It wasn't just tabletop versus online. It was just two good players having a good time in an amazing lizard man mirror. And it was actually honestly, as far as lizard man, lizard man mirrors go, it was pretty good. Oh, it was great actually. Zebra's uh, had a bit better dice, but he also found some really good plays to put some pressure on and consistently give himself a chance to steal the ball on defense. Yeah. Did it both times. It's really good, really well played by Zebra's. Yeah. And someone gets the gift of Strider in the second round. <laughs> Commiserations to them. <laughs> yep. And so there you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.